Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your May 1st to the 15th, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. It gets this channel seen by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so very much. You guys are awesome. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Oh, goodness. And <laughs> show me clearly. These three obviously want to be heard. There we go. Spirit is a bit chatty and I love it. So let's see here. Oh, we have the Three of Swords reverse. If the Three of Swords needs to come up in a reading, right? We would, well, I would absolutely prefer for it to come up reverse. So here, I'm so excited that the Three of Swords is reverse for you, Aquarius, because it's a release of heartbreak, of pain, of disappointment, of anger, of upset. You know, it's it's being in the midst of like of a heartbreak and then and then this is the time this is the time after a heartbreak where it's oh but i can still put one foot in front of the other it's like i'm i haven't been destroyed and that is is a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing it moves us then to the queen of pentacles reverse now this is earth sign energy taurus virgo capricorn if we have earth sign energy in our chart if we have earth sign energy in our life we can find this to be a bit challenging but we can also find seeing our prosperity seeing our success seeing ourselves as prosperous individuals to be a bit challenging during this time so do be mindful about this because we can sit there and be like well it doesn't matter and spirit's like smacking its forehead saying it does matter it does matter with the with the page of wands reverse fire sign energy aries leo sagittarius so if oh and earth sign energy if we're also born on the cusp of capricorn so with the page of wands reverse if we have fire sign energy in our chart again if we have fire sign energy in our life aries leo sagittarius we can find this to be challenging and this is going to be a time for us where we are un unwilling students of our passion and of our fire. There is also going to be a need to connect with the sacred feminine aspect of ourselves and to connect with a more gentler side of being able to move forward, being able to go after what it is that we want and not see it as I have to be like, it's rejecting warrior energy. And I don't know why that's coming through so powerfully, but there's really a sense here of can I, can I embrace my prosperity, my success, and my bounty and reject the warrior energy? It doesn't mean that I give up on myself. It means that, you know, I sit there and I look at myself and I say, but in my heart, I'm a healer, not a fighter. So just being aware of this during this time, it doesn't mean you won't have to fight battles, right? But just being aware of this becomes groundbreaking. And that's going to be one of the things that you struggle with during this time here, Aquarius. Spirit is also giving you a lot of messages that you haven't been seeing. So slowing it down and letting ourselves, you know, connect, that's going to be very important. With the fool, we're taking a leap of faith. We're afraid to be foolish. We're afraid to truly leap the way that we want to. And there's a doubt there's a fear. There's a sense of oh, what will people think of me? And you know what? People will think whatever the heck they want to think of you. That's okay. Everybody has an opinion. What do you think of you is what matters. How are you connecting to what your soul deeply, deeply wants and desires? Because there's going to be something that comes up during this time where your heart sings to it. It's like this excitement comes in you and it's like, oh, but, but I can't do that. Now it might be for very practical reasons. So sit there and be like, oh, wow, I regret my responsibilities. You know, no, responsibilities happen, life happens. But what is your passion? What do you desire? What's coming forward in your life? And there's a fear here of, can I actually take this? And spirit's like, yeah, of course. I remember every single hero's journey first begins with that person being a fool. First begins with them being laughed at and mocked and not understood. The Queen of Wands is reversed. And so it's interesting. So it's with it's this earthly plane right now that we're having a bit of difficulty with. And I know that sounds like great. Thank you so much, Dane. But it is important to see that through spirit. It's like, okay. And it's with connecting with our sacred feminine energy, which spirit already stated in in the page of wands. So here we have the Queen of Wands, again, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We can have somebody who 
we can be having a bit of a temper during this time or somebody is having a bit of a temper around us. We can also be experiencing somebody using money or what we love as much as money as a a power tool against us. So just be be aware of this during this time. With the Queen of Wands reversed, we're not seeing our magic. We're not seeing our fire. We can try and fit in with the crowd. It's just not going to work. And there's a sense here of if I can't be like everybody else, what the heck's the point? And the point is that this is your story. This is your life. You know, we can sit there and say, oh, I wasted this. I did this. I didn't do this right. It is all part of your story. And it is a beautiful, beautiful story. So showing yourself grace, looking with the queen of wands and saying, what is my fire? What is my passion? Because we've gotten away from that with the fear of what everybody else will think. So being aware of that is going to be important. And then we have the page of swords. Now we have a lot of people showing up in this reading so far, right? We have fire sign energies, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have earth sign energies, Taurus, Virgos, Capricorns. And now we have ourselves showing up, Aquarius. This is water sign energy. No, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is us. We come through as the page, as the learner. So no wonder the queen role doesn't fit for us. It's like telling a princess who is young and learning, okay, now you're going to be a queen and you just have to go. So here with the page of swords, it is letting ourselves be a student during this time. It's embracing our third chakra. That is going to be something that's difficult for us. It's taking in the messages from spirit and it's letting us run flow forward, go forward, embrace what it is that we want, look at things in a different way. And so here we are the learner. Now we have temperance energy coming forward. This is also Sagittarius. So Sagittarius time frame is November 22nd to December 21st. You're going to be a student till the Sagittarius time frame comes. Okay. It might not be all the time that you're in absolute student mode, but you are going to see here, Aquarius, that you are a student and you are going to be diving deeper and deeper and deeper into what is true for you. What do you want? What brings balance? What brings harmony into your life? What is your truth? And that is going to be important because this is a year. This is a time, especially up to Sagittarius time frame. but that's like the whole entire year, pretty much. Yeah, December 21st, right? Up until the solstice, we're going to see here that we're looking, we're looking, we're diving deeper, we're, we're gaining an understanding. And it's like, what is my truth? What is it that I desire? And it brings us then to the death card reverse. This is Scorpio time frame. So Scorpio time frame is right before Sagittarius time frame. And this is October 23rd to November 21st. And what we're having a bit of difficulty with is Scorpio energy. Okay. So it can be lies. All right. It can be lies that we've told ourselves, like, this is my path. This is what I should be doing. This is how I should be conducting myself. This is what responsibility looks like, or this is what, you know, prosperity looks like. And again, it doesn't mean that we take our responsibilities and we run away, away from them. Spirit wants to make that very clear. And my connection with spirit, it always says, you know, uphold your responsibilities, uphold what's important to you, right? And what's important. But it is also looking at things and saying, am I making certain things that I think right now are important to me? Are they actually important to me? Or is this what I think I'm supposed to be doing for everybody else? And that's going to be huge during this time, Aquarius. This is transformation. The death card reverse is like, I don't want to transform. I don't want to let go. Oh my gosh, I just saw. How long have I been? I've been using these cards forever. Okay. And right down here. Now I know this is his boot, right? But it looks like a skull. You can't see that. If that's upside down, it looks like a skull. There's something here where something is going to come to you and it's going to be like, oh. And what I thought of that is like, we walk in the knowledge of others that came before us. We are slowly building and growing and understanding. And even the knowledge of our own soul through reincarnation, through you know whatever inspirations come our way, we are resisting a transformation. Why? Because everybody's going through a really big awakening, a really big transformation, and we're questioning ourselves during this time. It's very common. You will see a lot of others doing it as well. Aquarius, but it doesn't mean that it's easier. So let's see here what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Oh, and if you are interested in entering to receive a free reading, put a flower in the comment box below. A person will be chosen at random and announced in a completely separate video on Sunday. So hit the bell notification so you can be notified when that announcement is made. So let's see here, angels and spirit guides show me clearly. This, we have two, we have harmony and we have hope reverse. It's interesting because 
Temperance is harmony. And, and Spirit is saying we need to be in harmony with ourselves and we need to have hope again. Hope we can look at as delicious lies we tell ourselves. I've heard that before and I, I, I like that, but I don't like the lies. It's, it's delicious expectations we have for ourselves. Those are our hopes. Those are our dreams. That's what we desire. And hoping is so important to getting us to wake up and, you know, embrace the next day to, to move forward. We're, we're finding harmony. We've, been out of alignment with what we, we truly hope for. So do be aware of this, that we can think, oh, it's just a lie. Like hope is just a lie. It's not. It's one of the most powerful things we have as humans to keep us moving forward. Our chakra energy angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels. Here we have creativity. And this is a sacral chakra. We are embracing our creativity. We are embracing our inspiration. And this can also this is also why we're doubting ourselves or can be doubting ourselves. You know, for some of us, it's going to be really strong doubts and fears that come forward. For others of us, it's just going to be a, a sense of procrastination. It's going to be a sense of turning away when we think, oh, I should walk forward. You know, so just be aware of this during this time because our creativity, our sacral chakra is burning very, very brightly within us. It brings us then to our energy to be mindful of angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. This is the four of cups. And the four of cups is like, hey, change your mind, change your life type of thing. That's also the five of cups. But that's there. there's a sense here of be very mindful because it's just as creativity said to us, we could be focusing on the wrong thing because, you know, that's just how life works sometimes. With the four of cups, we can be focusing on the wrong thing. And divinity is very much wanting us to look at, at things a different way. And we're going to be very stubborn and be like, nope, it needs to be like this. So just know that somewhere within these 15 days, spirit is going to smack us upside the head, make us see things differently. And we're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. I didn't know it like that. We are releasing a huge heartbreak, pain, disappointment, we could have carried this for years upon years upon years. It could be something new to us. It all depends where we are in our journey. But what we're going to see here is that the first half of May is a time of release. It is also a time that we question, you know, why am I on this earth? You know, how am I building things forward? What is my success? What is my purpose? Where is it that I want to be? And we're going to get that answer coming to us. We are. We're going to be afraid of what we hear. And so that can also have us put the brakes on things, but we aren't meant to, to just jump right in right now. We are meant to be a student. We are meant to kind of go slow, build things, guide, guide ourselves forward, see ourselves with honor and respect and let ourselves learn, let ourselves be beginners. You know, even if we think I should be an old hand at this, no, let yourself be a beginner. During this time, ask questions, dive deeper, look at inspirations, you know, take up things as hobbies, Okay, we do not need to monetize our hobbies. Do something for the joy and brilliance of doing it and see yourself be inspired. You are going to be getting the most brilliant messages coming your way from spirit. And it's going to be focusing around our fear. We have been ignoring that, you know, thinking I should just plow forward one certain way. And this is going to be a time where we kind of change course a little bit. It could be mentally, it could be that we think, oh, I should be here working at this place. And then all of a sudden we get inspired. And it's like, well, maybe I do this. Maybe I try this. We need to look at our truth. We need to say, what is true for me? And then listen, when spirit tells us, when our heart tells us, this is true for you. You know, we can be highly sensitive people. If you've stumbled across this channel, if you're here, you're most likely more sensitive, more connected to the universe. You want to walk in this earth gently, you know, where, whereas others like, like to stomp on it. There's just going to be a different energy vibration to you and respecting that and saying, this is my balance. This is my harmony. This is where I need to be. I'm afraid of transforming. I'm afraid of, of the dying way of the old self and the rebirth of the new. And that's okay. We all are. We can think, oh, but this was perfection. You know, this was perfect, but it's going to change now. And everything is changing. I don't see it being, this is perfection. I see there being a struggle with things. And I see that as it transforms, we're kind of like, but this is kind of like the devil I know type of thing. This is, this is what I've become comfortable with. What if it changes and it's worse? What if it changes and it's better? 
What if we step into ourselves and find our voice and realize, oh, my gosh, you know, I found me along the way. I see me now. Our subconscious, because that's what's happening during this time. If we give ourselves permission, we start to see ourselves and we start to say, I can do that. I can be this. I can, because we've negated the sacred feminine within us. So we've seen things like nurturing and caring and compassion and, you know, creativity, but the slower things, a non kind of aggressive, warlike, and I'm not, I'm, this is a, a gross generalization, right? But we see things, these things as, as unimportant. We see the things that are considered quote unquote feminine as being unimportant in unimportant. And what's really gotten me is that, you know, when you see people promote a woman in history, she's usually, you know, she stepped out of her role of being portrayed as female, but she usually does it in a very masculine way. It's like she has to like have people killed or do do whatever. It's like, my gosh, that's that's harsh. So here it's kind of like, but I can be, I can be a calmer, gentler being, no matter what my gender, no matter how I identify myself, I can be a calmer, gentler being and have that be seen and have that be a prosperous thing on this earthly plane. Because it doesn't always have to be, you know, this fierceness, this ferocity, this aggression in life. There is something beautiful in the gentle and we need to start seeing that again. It brings us to radiant. Our spirit message is let yourself be radiant as you find your harmony, as you gain back your heart, your hope and your heart, let yourself be radiant. Our subconscious chakra message is universal light. Now, this is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown reversed. And we're not connecting because we're overwhelmed. We can feel hopeless. We, you know, can feel like I can't do this. And if that's the case, you know, getting outside help, talking to a doctor, a therapist, you know, a spiritual advisor, using herbs, using, you know, medication that can help us. That's important. You know, don't sit there and be like, no, 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 I have to do it just this way. So letting the universal light come back in and letting ourselves see ourselves, that is an important thing and be more connected to this world than we were ever before. We are going to have to work through darknesses and fear that make us think being part of the universal light is scary. It's overwhelming. Like it's, I just see it as scary and overwhelming is coming through for one reason or another. And so this is going to be a time where we need to combat that. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is false truths. This is the ace of swords. This is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe handing us a gift of our voice, of knowledge, of insight. We're afraid to take this, first of all. That's why we need to be mindful of it. But we're going to follow other people's voices that aren't ours, meaning we're going to think, oh my gosh, that person, what they say sounds true. I need to follow them exactly. Not I need to take the skibbit, the skibbit, the the little morsel that's true for me, hold that close to my heart, and then move forward. So just be aware of this. And then our subconscious, oh, spirit message is the King of Pentacles. Okay, so we have the Queen of Pentacles and we have the King of Pentacles. This is a soulmate connection, true love connection coming through. We can be having a hard time with our soulmate. That could be the case. We can be looking for a soulmate, and it's kind of like ships in the night. Do know that you're passing each other. But there's also a sense here of doubting your own prosperity, your success, like seeing yourself as not being good enough, not, you know, moving in the right direction. So you're not worthy of love. Stop that. Stop that. It's almost like I need to have the the orchard full of of apples before anybody will look at me. You can't you can't help if one tree doesn't grow or it gets a blight or, you know, whatever happens. You're still worthy. Just be aware of that. OK. All right. All right, Aquarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.